Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I'm at my mom's place. She's having problems with her refrigerator. It is not cooling properly and it's building up ice inside the freezer area. Normally when that happens you have a bad heater uh, element or a bad timer. So I'm trying to get the ice in the panel removed so I can check the heating element to see if it has ohms. I got a video link below showing people how to fix this problem. This Frigidaire that's the model number tag and all that right there. It says it's a Frigidaire somewhere around here. That says tap in. That I'm repairing. The problem is the refrigerator was icing up. And when it ices up, it stops the transfer of cold air from the freezer area to the refrigerator. And then everything quits working properly. And it doesn't get cold enough even in the freezer. And sometimes your stuff starts defrosting in the freezer. And what most people do to temporarily remedy the problem is they unplug the refrigerator, let everything thaw out, and then they plug it back in and it works fine for two or three days. And then it ices up again and causes the problem with the refrigerator not staying cold again. The tools you need in addition to a hair dryer, you need a ohm meter to check the heating element, regular screwdriver, cross tip screwdriver, quarter inch driver, razor blade, pair of pliers to crimp uh, a connection if you need to, a magnet in case you drop something, and a flashlight. Troubleshoot it, determine what parts you need, then install the parts. First thing you want to do is pull these two screws and pull this panel down and out. You do not have to remove the control on this uh, machine. This knob comes off with the panel. Here that restricts the airflow in and out of here. Turn one way or the other way. Then you have a couple of screws holding the panel. Pull that down and then you unplug your fan, which it, that happened when I pulled it away from the backing. That gives me access to check my heating element. When this happens, you have generally one of two problems. One, your heating element is bad. Your heating element goes along this, um, I guess, condenser. And you can see the wire runs under there. And there is a break in that element. When that happens, that can't heat up and melt the ice. And then the ice gets out of control. You can even see ice down there that's blocking uh, air transfer. That's not good. You got ice down here where the cold air is supposed to go blocking that. That's not good. That's number one. Number two, the timer that cycles the heating element off and on goes bad. That heating element can't run all the time. It'll keep everything too hot. It's only supposed to heat a little bit at a time to stop the uh, ice from forming. The third thing that can happen is the thermostat can go bad. That'll stop it from defrosting properly while it's functioning. Or last but not least, the fan can go bad, which is very rare for that to cause this problem. Because the refrigerator is creating ice, it's normally your heating element or your timer. So the first thing you want to do is take the panel apart somehow, access your heating element, test that for continuity. You uh, find the two ends of the heating element. You put your own meter to ohms. You touch one on one side of the heating element, touch the other one on the other side of the heating element. If you get a reading, the heating element's good. You probably got a timer or a thermostat problem. 
Here is your thermostat. Usually, if your thermostat goes bad, that wax plug in there will expand and pop out. There's really no way to test this. It's a $16, $17 part because I'm mobile and I'm trying to leave the Pittsburgh area. I'm just going to replace this cheaper part. Now, in this refrigerator, because it's an older model, the timer is $27 in tax and the fan motor is the same in some tax so I'm going to replace the uh, timer because the heating elements good and I'm going to replace the thermostat then I'm gonna plug it in if the fan works I'm not going to replace the fan I'll try to return that part or I'll try to sell it on eBay or something now the timer is inside the refrigerator here it's right up there next I'm going to lower the control unit down so that I can get the timer out there's a quarter inch screw hidden back there you remove that drop the unit down after that you remove those two Phillips screws to take the timer loose from the unit get your timer out make sure the prongs are the same and you probably got the same two mounting screws in the locations so those screws can go back in there so let me go ahead plug this in and put this assembly back together I'm gonna go ahead and clip this in the position and screw that uh, quarter inch screw in to secure that back to the base or the top of this refrigerator area now that is secure and I made sure the back piece was secure as well next I'm going to put the thermostat in and basically it plugs into those two wires there and it clips on the refrigerated uh, condenser there the, the new unit does not have the proper terminal ends on there I guess it's just a general unit so what you need to do is cut off those ends and connect them with these and then uh, plug it into the refrigerator. So probably didn't matter which is which. However, I'm going to keep them right, right, left, left. All right, I got these terminal ends spliced over. And now I'm going to slide these over here and try to weatherproof them and waterproof them with this heat shrink. So you use a hair dryer or something and try to melt this heat shrink or a lighter, but you don't put it too close. You don't want it to melt it off of there. So I roll a heat shrink up like that, heat it up with the lighter a little bit till it seals that off. You don't want ice building up, getting water down in there and causing this to short out. Best I could do as far as the heat shrinking is concerned, I'm going to do a little bit more on this end, but just make it as weather tight as you can. Next, you choose the clips that will hold it in place. In my application, this one's going to be the one that's going to hold it on. So let me snap that in place so you can see how it goes. And when you get it in position, you squeeze that. It'll self-lock, and then I'm going to plug it in. So I put the sensor on the pipe. Then I put the clip over top of the hole. Then I spun it around and clipped it in place so that it's holding on to that uh, condenser. Then I plug the two wires in here. That wire will go in a male and female. That wire will go male to female. Now that I have those wires plugged in, I'm going to go ahead and tuck them back out of the way. And then I'm going to plug the heating element back in. Then I'm going to place the back piece in place the way it's supposed to go so that it will plug the fan in. Now, if you got a hair dryer, you want to go ahead and try to get all this ice defrosted out of there and from back there just to give you a head start on this thing totally defrosting. I put the styrofoam back in place and that insulates all these wires and put this thing back in here to try to protect those wires from you know the back of the refrigerator back of the freezer and I'm gonna do the same for this side here after I plug that up. Because the fan was iced up I don't know if it's working or not. When I plug it in, 
if the fan doesn't fire right up, I'll disconnect it and replace this fan motor. For right now, I'm not going to replace the motor. However, the fan blade alone is like $27. So, I didn't get the blade. I just got the motor assembly. Get this back piece in right, and then the fan plugged in. I had to take the fan out of here. So, I released the clips from here. I'm going to put this back in place. Then I'm going to plug the fan in. So, I installed the four screws to hold the panel in place in the back. Now I'm going to plug in the motor, the fan motor, and put it through the hole. I right, have the fan in place with those two screws secured. I actually think those, uh, that fan was clipped on the other side of that somehow. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and install this. Oh, that's how that was. Clip this in place. Now I'm going to plug the refrigerator in and see if that fan works. Fan is not working, so I'm going to leave it for a few minutes see if that fan kicks on. Well, I think this fan should be turning, and it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this fan and replace it. So better safe than sorry, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off of here. Be careful how those brackets are installed on there. You want to get them on the new motor in the right way. You got a ground wire that's holding this wire on the here. You want to switch that over. So go ahead and pry your plug out of there. Move that over there. And then move this bracket over there after you pull this off of there. The ground wire on there. I have the plug clipped through there. I got the back of the motor in that rubber bushing. I got the front of the motor in this rubber bushing. I'm lining up the brackets. And the blade actually pulled off relatively easy off of the old one. I'm going to push it on the new one. And that should be good to go. The upper and lower bracket actually counterlocks together right there. On both sides. So that stays in a good position. And as you can see, my fan is in the bracket properly with the rubber bushings. So let me push the fan blade on and install it. Alright, with the fan motor replaced... It still didn't come on when I plugged it in, so it must have something to do with the timer. At any rate, I got it, so it's replaced. No big deal. Next is the air baffle, and it has two screws there. Slides in place, locks in down there, and keeps your air going the right direction. And this thing here limits the amount of air that goes down there whenever you turn that knob. Okay, everything's back together. Just got to let everything defrost so there's absolutely no ice in there. Then close it up, plug it in, and it should work. I'll uh, check in a couple days, a week or two, make sure everything's still working. If there's any other information, I will post them in the comments below. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.